Hey, hey. Hey, hey, man. How are you? Sorry for the technical difficulties. Oh, you are good. Instagram Live is great, but it is what it is. It is quite finicky. <laughs> That's all right. I know. I know you've had some problems on the on the Liturgy Collective page this week. It just My kind goodness. Of... Yeah, it's just all over the place. Did you see the one with Scott Sauls the other day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I, think uh, I watched it after it was live. I was like, oh, gosh, like. I, that would definitely be us trying to be fancy and then we're just right next door rain rack, but. Yeah. <laughs> well man i'm glad you uh took the time to talk with us i um kind of a weird deal i kind of discovered you i guess you could say in your music it had nothing to do with the world that that we kind of are in it was it was i was looking up a review for a pedal and um it was the boss uh octave pedal yeah. I remember that I, I watched that review and I was like, oh, wait a minute, this guy, we, I may have something to follow here. <laughs> and, uh, and then I kept going and then, and then I, that was before you moved to Nashville, I believe. So yeah, um, I kind of kept able. going there. So now that we kind of know who you are, uh, let me kind of introduce you real quick. You are a, let me get this right. You're a staff musician at Covenant Presbyterians. All right. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Now, I am not in that kind of church capacity. So if you can uh, kind of explain what exactly um, your role is there in your uh, yeah. church as a staff musician. I've not been at a church of that capacity prior to yeah. coming here in Nashville myself either. Yeah. Uh, and so it's sort of learning the ropes of big church, how yeah. staffing operates. But I'm basically Tim Nicholson's right-hand guy at this okay. point. Um, and you interviewed him a week yeah. or two ago. Last week, yeah. So helping plan liturgies and do administrative day-to-day -day office tasks with him okay. and out with choir, helping out with ensembles and Sunday morning, musically helping lead a covenant prez. Okay. Well, cool. And you are, so tell me kind of as, as the staff musician, I, I know that you are, you are a multi-instrumentalist, right? Like you're, the, you're more than just a guitar player. Um, yeah. Where, what all do you play? Yeah, mostly guitar. Um, finger style is sort of my wheelhouse. Um, James Taylory, Phil Peggy type yeah. stuff. Um, but then I can also do drums, which isn't very useful at Covenant Presbyterian. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, watched a, I've watched a few services. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish I could play piano, but I leave that totally to Tim Nicholson. Um, yeah. yeah, I won't touch it anywhere near him. I think I took a semester of, of piano and, and I was like, just let me get my credits in and I'll go from there. That, I'm so. the same exact way. <laughs> um, steel guitar, lap steel? Um, pedal steel, a little pedal bit. Steel. Um, had a pedal steel it's back there um okay. i've had that for a couple of years now and i've only played it in front of people once ever i'd like to keep it that way but oh i think i yeah. might have lost yeah i got you i hear you man well it's yeah I, I got a phone call you know whenever you turn on do not disturb it tells you that no you're not going to get a call but you still get calls, so so. <laughs> so let me. Uh, we'll, we'll get into it then. Um, so that so that's you in a nutshell, and that's the reason why I wanted to kind of have you on um, to talk about this this topic of, of instrumentation. Um, it's not necessarily something that we that we think about unless it becomes an issue. Um, I, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, you know, like in, in my context, it's more of you know, hey, that 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 drum is is way too loud or. Or do you really need an electric guitarist? You know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So what would you say, um, what role does instrumentation or what role should instrumentation play um, in a church's worship? So I think that it varies in different contexts and I can get behind philosophies. Um, so let me back up and say, during my college years, I was part of... Um, I was attending a church that was RPCNA, the Reformed Presbyterian Church of North America. And okay. they sing psalms exclusively and they use no instruments in yeah. worship. Um, and at first that was really jarring to be a part of, but yeah. personally it was really refreshing to not have any distractions. As a musician, yeah. I'm like trying to figure out the drums or like what, what brand is on the kick yeah. drum, I'm not distracting oh, I these yeah. things. Um, so that was refreshing. And they almost convinced me of their argument for not using instruments in worship. Yeah. And that is one pastor told me that um, instruments had a very specific role in Old Testament temple worship. And to yeah. use instruments in New Testament 
current church worship is to hearken back to that Old Testament sacrificial system and is to yeah. re Christ. Yeah. At first, that's like, oh, geez. That's a lot. But yeah. It, it's, it's a stretch to me. I don't see yeah. it theologically lining up. But that was the closest argument that almost convinced me. Yeah. But, um, the role the instruments play in worship, I abide by the regulative principle that says okay. that um, we're only to do in corporate worship that which scripture explicitly commands us to do. Yeah. Um, and with that, there's two categories of things. There's the elements of worship, and then there's the circumstances of worship. Okay. And this is where it gets a little bit fuzzy for people. Yeah. The elements worship i think our congregational singing i don't think guitar in worship is considered right. worship right. guitar is a circumstance just as much as air conditioning or pews or the time that we choose to meet um right say that it's just as much of a circumstance as blowing a pitch pipe to get a pitch to sing a cappella. yeah so it's a circumstance that ought be given careful careful thought to but it's not one of those essential elements. It's not like we're monkeying with the actual elements of worship when we okay. change instrumentation. Yeah. Okay. So what is that, whatever is conducive to a particular congregation stylistically and isn't necessarily a distraction. I think it's good to be pushed with our comfort, comfort levels every once oh, yeah. in a while. Yeah. Um, because we mm -hmm. are so quick to make idols out of worship. Yeah, um, definitely. And a pipe organ can be an idol. Acapella psalm singing can be an idol. Guitar can be an idol. It can. So you break that down into two categories. Uh, as, as ele you said elemental, is that right? Yeah, elements of worship yeah. and then the circumstances of worship. Elements, okay. So in, in those elements, really what we're talking about there is kind of the, just the natural flow of what the church is as they gather. Is that kind of... Yeah. So okay. God calls his people through scripture to gather and worship. We... Yeah. On by singing songs of praise, confession, assurance of pardon, all of those elements, okay. liturgy, I would say, are like the elements of worship. Okay. And then the okay. circumstances, the trivial things that help that to happen. Yeah, are things we bring in. And, and you know, it's, it's funny how I kind of come from a different spot where if the argument for no instrumentation is not out of uh, singing psalms exclusively it's it's more you know i've heard the argument where you know there's there shouldn't be any instruments with with any bass in them or or because it's just too you know it's, it's, it's the devil's instrument whereas you know we're only going to yeah. use piano but we forget that there's a piano there's a bass side and a treble side to every to every piano so yeah neither, I, I like the uh exclusive psalmody argument better than, than that argument but yeah, yeah I, thing like i can get behind the philosophy of no instruments but as soon as you open yeah. the door to include instruments you don't get to yeah. pick no no i i agree and, Congregation. and I, yeah i, I agree and, and like you say it, it, can, it can be abused and it can become an idol in, in any in any context you know even even if there is no instrumentation at all well let me ask this i, I don't know um i don't know how how far your your depth of of instrumentation goes but can you tell us anything about maybe the, the history of instrumentation in the church? Sure. I'm, I'm no church historian. Yeah. But I know that at least post-Reformation, a lot of churches were going the acapella route, some yeah. for theological conviction, some for just the convenience of not having to have instruments. Right. Yeah. Um, and there was a really fascinating article that I saw a few months back that was the history of the church choir and the role that choirs played in worship. And initially, church choirs were just a few people within a church congregation that yeah. decided, like, hey, we don't really know these tunes as a, as a whole. So we need to have a few people that know it that can really undergird and help the whole church to sing, yeah. which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. But then even that has in a lot of contexts become an idol because oh, yeah. you go to churches that are just totally choir driven and no yeah. one in the pews is singing. Yeah. So like Calvin said, that we're the human heart is a factory of idols. We're, we'll yeah. turn it to it. Oh, yeah. but, we'll find something. So the history of it, I know that there was a lot of churches that were doing the acapella thing, both for uh -huh. theological conviction and convenience. Um, and then pipe organs, from what I understand, were largely like it made sense for a church to be where they would install them. So if someone yeah. had 
grants or someone wanted to fund an organ being installed yeah. anywhere, it didn't make sense to yeah. put it in. A, um, so churches were often the first place they were put, not with intent to use them for corporate worship. Yeah. But eventually, just out of convenience, them being there, they began using them in corporate worship. And again, not as like that's there's nothing wrong with pipe organ and worship. Yeah. But the, the people that I hear argue for a pipe organ only, yeah. and there's quite a few of those, yeah. uh, wherever you'll find yourself culturally, contextually, but um, they will say that like, oh, rock bands, like that's way too loud to use to lead worship. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. met an organ on a decibel meter? It's usually about twice as loud as a rock band would be. <laughs> I, I know, and, and I always love that. And, and I'm not, I'm not on a soapbox yet, but I, I always love that it, it's always a, a rock band. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's always a rock band. You know, because like I've watched several of your your services, and um, I would definitely not call it that. Whenever whenever a band is is brought in, um, you know, and and oftentimes, like at least kind of where I grew up, it was the organ. It was not a pipe organ. I mean, it was an electric, like, Lavanova most of the time, you know. So mm. it's just interesting, you know, and I, that could probably say something to the quality of what we're doing, too. Um, but, but yeah, the history of, history of exploitation is, is interesting because, you know, you have, you know, some of the biggest names like Spurgeon, who was – he was an acapella guy, you know. And, mm. and, I mean, he didn't have a worship leader. He was the worship leader and a pastor. And, you know, of course, if I was as big as him, they could probably – sing as loud as he could. I may do that too, but <laughs> it is interesting to see. We get so tied up in, well, I don't want drums and I don't want guitar or anything like that. But when we look back, there's the, that argument has always been, you know, since, since the beginning, there's always been an instrument argument. So, yeah. So with that being said, now, now that we're in the point of church history where you can, you can worship in any style that you want, it, it depended on where you're willing to drive. You know, if you're if you're if you're ready to do that, how how can no matter what context you're in, how can musicians, uh, church musicians, best serve their congregation? That's a great question. Um, because I've found myself through the years, sort of in totally different church musical style yeah. contexts. I've sort of learned to be a chameleon um, yeah. wherever I'm at, and. Yeah. It's really been humbling because it forces you to set your preferences aside. Like, right. did you ever think that I would be a part of an acapella church during my college years? Yes. Heck no. Yeah. Did I ever think that I would be on staff at a church that primarily is led from the pipe organ? Didn't think that either. Yeah. But it's all practical tools to help God's church sing the truth of the gospel. That's what it needs end up being and we need to set our preferences aside so covenant presbyterians gorgeous gothic sanctuary lends itself to that mm -hmm. style and it has a beautiful pipe organ in it so yeah. we need to be good stewards of what god has gifted us with so that's what we'll continue to incorporate while also having other instruments and other styles as well again because i think that it's important that we push our own comfort zones of our churches and ourselves so that it does not become an idol in one style not what we insist on worship being. Yeah. So what would you say for, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm assuming um, you would consider yourself and I would consider you more of a professional musician because that is what you do and you get paid to do it. <laughs> so that's kind of where you are. What would you say for, you know, someone who is not, you know, someone who learned how to play bass guitar in the youth group and um, now they're the only bassist in their, in their church how could they best serve, you know, kind of in that context, uh, their their church too? Maybe to where their skill is, maybe they're they're only been playing maybe a year. Um, yeah. You know, how, how and they know that they're going to mess up. How, how What kind of encouragement is there for, for someone like that? I mean, I know I'm still going to mess up Sunday to Sunday. Yeah. So oh, yeah, definitely. Just being open to mentorship from other musicians, being open to okay. honest criticism and feedback, always. That's for beginners, yeah. that's for pros, that's for anybody. But, um, Having a tender heart and listening to the person that thinks that your instrument is satanic and just hearing them is also important. Just having a humble spirit, even when you don't feel like it, I think is really important, no matter what level you're at. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I'll tell you what, let's see. Let's talk real quick. Um, what, what is your role with the Liturgy Collective? 
um, you I know that you're usually on the live streams uh, for that. So kind of what are you what role are you playing in the Liturgy Collective? And then I know I had Tim talk about it last week, but maybe you could kind of share some of your your thoughts and excitements about about that next week. Sure. Yeah. Um, so my role in it is sort of similar to what I'm doing at Covenant. It's just okay. Tim's and helping him. He's the guy that's making this all happen. And I'm just yeah. picking up the things that I can help with and yeah. um, all that. But I'm really, really excited to hear from a few of the speakers, particularly. Um, and I think what I'm most excited for is just the in-person fellowship community yeah. aspect of all of it. Um, we've had a number of folks ask us if we're going to live stream it. And we didn't necessarily choose not to because we like want to be incarnational or anything like in person only or bust, but yeah. it's sort of out of convenience. We didn't want to invest budget funds into live streaming and everything. And it sort of hit um, this, like it'd be really sweet to have everybody there in person. Oh, yeah. then. So I'm excited yeah. for that. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm planning on heading up there next week. So we'll, we'll do our rehearsal on Wednesday night and I'll head on up to Nashville on a, uh, on, on Thursday, I'm in Huntsville right now, Huntsville, Alabama right now. So, gotcha. um, so we're not too far. So I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to meeting you. Yeah. And um, man, any other, anything you got on instrumentation? Anything else? Any more encouragement? I will have to dig up that article on the history of church choirs. Cause I've referenced it in another little podcasty interview as well. Yeah. I've lost track of it, but it's really helpful. Yeah. Really insightful. Um, yeah, if just, you do, just send it to us, and we'll uh, send sure. a message to me on here, and I'll, I'll make sure I get it posted on there. Sounds good. Okay, man. Hey, man, thank you so much for joining us, and I will let you get back to what you're doing. But um, Liturgy Collective is next week, the 21st and 21st, 22nd. Second, you can get on our website, which is liturgycollective.com, and use the discount code last minute, all capital, okay. and you can get 25% off registration. Great. Well, good job, man. I look forward to seeing you next week. And Sounds you have a good rest of your day. See ya. See ya.